You never leave Middle Earth, do you? I don't think you do. You always come back. Yeah. It would look, I, I was in a, I thought I couldn't have a smaller role than the first trilogy. <laughs> but no, it was fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic. I mean, it must be surreal. Completely surreal. For you. Totally. It's like, where's my part gone? You, yeah, but kind of nice to only come back for a short bit, in a way, mm. you know? Uh, not to have the pressure of the, the full trilogy and just sort of come back and revisit it was like a family yeah, reunion. Yeah, it's fun. You know? Fun to come back for two or three weeks. Yeah. yeah. But it has, it was, I found it, look, in my small way, I found it really strange to then go back and tell a story that was made or, or, you know, in the tr in the progression years, of it, 60 yes. Sixty years before. <laughs> How does one look? Sixty so years younger. Yeah, yeah, younger. Well, as elves, elves were timeless. Yes. Yeah, I guess. I guess. I suppose the the world of the film is not. It's not. It's one way. The sense of doom is not as as great. The whole world of the Lord of the Rings was very much in peril and the, the sort of an autumnal feel to it. But this is slightly more innocent. It's still tonally in the same place, but it's a slightly more innocent world, I suppose. Because I think that the high elves know what's coming, yeah. and also the audience does. So the audience brings their own level, I think, mm. of anxiety because they know the world that they're all plunging unwittingly hmm. into. Glad you're nice. <laughs> of course she does. Of course she does. <laughs> yeah, well, the, Frodo was actually not born during the time of The Hobbit, so the, the bit that I'm in is, is actually during the time of The Lord of the Rings, sort of before everything starts to fall apart. Yeah. yeah. So it's the innocent Frodo that we, we meet at the beginning of this. I enjoy w working with Pete and working in this. I, I, I love this feeling that you never know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You've just got to be prepared for everything and you've got to take responsibility for yourself and jump in and have a good time. Beautifully put, that's yeah. What I, mm. That's what I love. Um, I think he's the only director on, a, on the planet that can make you absolutely believe and um, invest in a character with bird shit running down his mm. head, pull, being pulled by a sleigh rabbits. full of rabbits, yeah. and you commit to that. Mm. I mean, yeah. there's very few directors who could get you to yeah. invest in the depth and reality of that moment. I mean, I'd have to agree with both of them. Part of it's working with Pete and being in the environment that he sets up for his actors and for the crew, um, and the world that he creates that does feel so believable and so real. You know, for Frodo, obviously, the, the large part of my journey was over, and it was an extraordinary journey, so just to kind of come back and revisit the, the innocence and fun of the character was just a joy. My more recent memories of the Hobbit are reading reading it to my kids mm -hmm. and loving that, loving revisiting that for them. But it's, yeah, I, that was the thing that most interested me about doing this film was tonally how, how similar or different The Hobbit was going to be to Lord of the Rings. Because there's a, there's, a, there's a playful... It's buoyant. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lighter quality to the book. I, I agree with Hugo. It's been, I mean, you know as a child when you're, when you're reading it, you're entering into a timeless universe but it's reinforced when you read it mm. um, with mm. and to your 11 year old son mm. and then you see it through their eyes and I can't wait I can't wait for them to see the mm. film. No, me neither. Well it was my introduction to Tolkien I mean I read it I read the book when I was probably 11 or 12 um, and it was just a magical adventure you know and I was also curious as to how this would feel in comparison to Lord of the Rings in the sense that it is very, it's very much a proper adventure story and it is more buoyant and sort of whimsical and funny. Mm. Did you keep going and, mm. and, and read Lord of the Rings straight after The Hobbit? Uh, uh, I didn't. No, no, no I, had, I, had a, I had the volume on my bookshelf and yeah. it was yeah. a little daunting. It's <laughs> 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 <That's laughs> <too long. laughs> <laughs> still daunting.
There's something about this set. You feel like it's such a big city that you come you come into the studio and it's this massive, massive. It's like a megapolis or something, and yet it's got the heart of a of a cottage industry. And there's mm. something about Pete that he's got this huge vision, the scope, but his ability to always be himself, have his feet often without shoes, very much on the ground, and he's this fabulously creative. Um, mind, he's all. The work never stops. He's always he keep keeps on creating. Well, whenever you hear other directors, um, very influential directors, um, talk about the directors that they admire and they look to as innovators, Peter's, or mm. you know, always one. You know, David Finch is one, Sam Raimi's another, and and Peter's absolutely one of those guys. And um, you know, as an actor, he's deeply human and funny and irreverent. Mm. And as you say, he's mm. like a mad scientist. Mm. And um, you know, there's, there's very few people who've got all that rolled into one package, I think. Mm. Yeah. Well, he's incredibly genteel um, and very down to earth. And, and like Hugo was saying, like the, the environment is so massive. It was bigger on this film than Rings as well. Mm. And yet it feels so intimate and, and it feels like it's being run by a small community and a family, mm -hmm. and I think that extends from Peter, and it's really quite extraordinary. You know, coming back here to New Zealand, it feels like you're kind of working in a, a neighborhood um, with a lot of friends and family, and yet the scope is so incredibly massive. Oh, I think it's vital. It couldn't be anywhere else. It yeah. couldn't. Yeah. I mean, it's. I think obviously because of its its relative remoteness, mm. it's what makes it. It's like Australia. Yeah. I mean, everyone talks about what makes, you know, Australia so unique, and it's that sort of relative comparative distance. But it's what you were saying too. It's it's incredible, and a real testament to the heart of the country that this incredible creative eruption has been exposed internationally, but still the very handmade. Quality, yeah. the down to earth quality, the just getting practical um, day to day um, process of making films hasn't changed. And the joy of the, all the Kiwis seem to express working day to day on, on the, the, the sort of excitement of working on it, that's mm. so palpable. Mm. And, that, and that's in the street, people come up and, and shake your hands and they're excited about seeing the film, and there's something really, really lovely about that mm. quality. It's so uncynical. Yeah, I mean, I, I completely agree. There's also a sort of, the thing I love about New Zealand crews is they, they have a kind of creative ingenuity. I mean, I remember on Rings, m you know, multiple crew members would wear different hats and do as many things that they possibly could to aid in the ultimate um, job at hand. And, and that's such a beautiful thing. There seems to be no separation from department to department. Everyone's just giving their all to the, the creative vision and working together. It's beautiful. I was thrilling to see it. And, well, for me, possibly for all of us, you feel like, well, you, often when you go and see a film you're in a, a lot, it, it takes a little while for you to really be able to see it objectively. But mm -hmm. this film, I felt so, immersed in it and swept mm. away. I really mm -hmm. felt like a kid totally. watching it. It was absolutely delightful and uh, very moving as well. And like really profoundly moving in, in parts and, and exciting and, and um, yeah, yeah, kind of mind blowing. Really. Like I that? think the storytelling is impeccable because it's such a, um, I mean, there's so many avenues you can go down in the story and, and it's been so, judiciously put together mm. and for me the, the the quintessential moment was when Bilbo f found the ring and I mean I was only watching by myself but I gasped because I think I and I think the audience will have that sense of collective memory oh no that's it this yeah, is yeah, it yeah. and there's three more movies I'm gonna have to watch <laughs> no but it's I think that's it, the, the, the collective memory of the audience is really going to feed the experience. Totally. I mean, it's, it's perfect in a way that I think that the rings was made first yeah. and that this has come later because I found the experience so rich, really rich. Mm. 
Uh, yeah, I completely agree. Um, it's it is rare that you get to see something objectively, and having had such a small part in the film, it was just lovely to watch, as a as a fan, as you know, the the entire spirit experience just kind of washes over you. Um, it's a it's a ride. It's wonderful. It's a lot of fun. Mm.